Ladies and gents, welcome back. A new fear sweeping the nation via mainstream media. Lock us down once again. Dozens of people screech across the entire nation of Canada today saying the new Omicron variant is so dangerous that we need to lock us, lock everything up. <laughs> too, early, too early to tell if new Omicron subvariant XBB15 spreading across U.S. is growing in Canada, reports CTV News. We have here 21 cases of COVID subvariant XBB, sorry, XBB15 detected in Canada, says FAC. Here we have Bonnie Henry, our British Columbia zone. Here, the the Public Health Agency of Canada, or FAC, has has said it has detected 21 cases of XBB15 Omicron subvariant as of January 4th. 21 cases, so I mean, it's in Canada already. This is we just kind of gotta get get grips on that one. Let's get our grips on that. The agency said Wednesday that uh, they would be reporting growth rates until there is sufficient data, but to, but a day earlier in an email to ctvnews.ca, that is still too early to tell if the variant is spreading in Canada beyond sporadic cases. But then they go on to tell you how fast it spreads. It's funny. Fact, scientists continue to monitor cases in Canada and track developments internationally. It's stated... The update on BXBB15 impact comes as a variant continues to spread across the U.S. and has caused concern among health experts who warn this variant may have a higher resistance to antibodies than previous strains. They don't go on to continue to tell you that it's actually uh, less viral, but some other articles will. But let's get into this because there's a lot of fear Shut down the borders, dozens of people are saying, <laughs> you know, a lot in the media types. Shut down those borders. Let's let's get back to lockdowns. Let's do this for this new variant that is um, less, less uh, bad than the last Omicron, which everyone was saying was, was uh, uh, well, just a common cold, essentially. Omicron, the first and the second. Uh, but here we have Pierre Polyev being asked and giving a kind of a flaccid answer to uh, what his party, the opposition in Canada, is saying to the people that are saying we should shut down the borders. Gallagher with CTV National News. Uh, good morning, Mr. Polyev. Good morning. Um, so the United States has recently put in a order that would require COVID test results for those traveling from China. Uh, you know, would you want to see Canada follow suit? Where would you stand on something like that? Well, we, we're conservatives are following this very carefully. And we know that the case numbers in China have exploded over the last several weeks. Um, we haven't yet decided whether we're going to call for the government to impose a mandatory test or vaccination at the border for China, incoming uh, Chinese flights from China. Um, but uh, we will watch it very carefully and we'll ba base our position on science and numbers. Uh, we, as you recall, two years ago, we originally said the border needed to be closed to China after COVID began. The government refused to do so for, I think, over 60 days. Um, but we were listening to the data at that time and we're listening to it now. Um, and uh, But at this point in time, we're not uh, making a public statement for or against mandatory testing uh, at the, our ports of entry from China. We will uh, keep you posted on our position, though. We do not have a position as of yet. We'll let you know as soon as we find out what the polls say. And, uh, well, the science and the data, that's what we went by for two years. And how, how well did that serve us? Anyway, we have here Bonnie Henry from British Columbia, the health public health officer, saying she has very little patience for people who are not immunized in healthcare. This is, this, here's our words. First, we need to give everybody the opportunity to be immunized. That is really important in healthcare. And uh, I have very little patience for people who aren't immunized in healthcare. And that will be, um, we've had a vaccinator mass policy for influenza. We will have a very similar um, policy that if people choose not to be immunized and you work in, in the healthcare, then you will not be able to work in certain settings without taking additional measures. There will be consequences for that decision. Um, 
in the sorry I'm, I'm yeah, not yeah, losing it. <laughs> the vitriol just you know, it made me lose my concentration mask immunize or mask policy for influenza which would be immunize or mask uh, well, she's not having that same policy for the uh, COVID-19 immunization, which draws into the question, what is immunization? Uh, the Webster's Dictionary here says, the act of making someone or something immune. Immune or the state of being immune. The act of result of immunizing someone or something, such as the pro uh, production of immunity in a living organization, or organism, sorry, against a disease or pathogen agent, also transmission by va as by vaccination for the purpose of making an organism immune to a disease or pathogen administration of an immune producing substance. So well, this calls into question the vaccine. I mean, the they're, they're calling it a leaky, a leaky vaccine. So, is there immunity there? So, uh, we, we've heard from people like uh, Brett Weinstein and Heather Weinstein on their channel, uh, the the Dark Horse podcast. Can we call this a vaccine at all? Can we call it a vaccine at all when it's so leaky? It doesn't provide immunity. It just provides protection, as they're saying. You know, you get sick. Uh, it would have been worse. Say the words. Say the words. It would have been worse if I hadn't been immunized or if I hadn't had that thing that I was forced to have. But here we have Dr. Bonnie Henry provides update on Kraken. They're calling it the Kraken. COVID-19 subvariant cases in BC. This comes from VancouverIsAwesome.com. <laughs> oh, I can't make this up. He health officials say 12 cases of new subvariant of the highly transmissible Omicron coronavirus strain have been detected in British Columbia, nicknamed the Kraken variant. The XBB1-5 strain has been quickly spreading across parts of the United States and most notably New York. So why, why are we shutting the borders? It's here. It's already here. And it's one of those things. It just it's boggles my mind. This is being called the Kraken. This is, <laughs> of course, the mythical beast that would swallow ship ho ships whole and left no one alive in its wake. This was the <laughs> this is the infamous thing. Maybe a few survivors just to tell the story about how the Kraken took down an entire ship. They're nicknaming this virus that has, well, there as we'll hear, has more of a survival rate than <laughs> the last one. As of Wednesday, January 4th, a total of 12 cases of XBB15, or the Kraken, have been detected in BC in the Vancouver Coastal Health and Fraser Health regions. A spokesperson for the Ministry of Health told Vancouver is awesome. Provincial Health Officer Bonnie Henry reported that five cases have been detected in the province from November 22nd up till the last week. The remaining cases were detected through the whole genome sequencing surveillance this week. The ministry notes that the cases represent a small proportion of the subvariants that have been detected in BC. Additionally, the numbers do not reflect all the positive cases in the province because PCR tests are needed to sequence the COVID-19 virus to identify variants. PCR, test P PCR testing is used primarily in healthcare settings and <laughs> airports around the world as hospitals to identify people who are more likely to experience severe illness from COVID-19. Why is the Kraken variant in particular interest? You know, the Kraken, the mythical beast that kills everything in his wake, except when it's uh, XBB5, XBB15, since it has acquired additional mutations since uh, that enhanced the ACE2 bindings properties, XBB15, or the Kraken, is able to spread more easily, according to the ministry spoke per spokesperson who added that this does not mean it is more severe. In fact, they're saying uh, Dr. Sarah Oto, a professional a professor at the Department of Zoology in the University of British Columbia told VIA that its scientists have noted a significant change in symptoms with BB1 XBB15, but it is showing a trans transmission advantage. 
with this advantage, the new subvariant is expected to continue to turn over variants that have led to high and fairly consistent levels of COVID-19 in Canada across the past six months. So we're saying that we have cases going dating back to November of 2022. And well, that, that means it's here. That means it's here. It's not going anywhere. And while the survivability rate is, well, quite high. It's quite high, and well, the survivability rate of the last one, as we saw, <laughs> the numbers of people that got it, or people stopped even testing for it because it was just ridiculous. They started testing wastewater just to find out if people had it, and what I mean by wastewater was, is actually wastewater. We're talking about the, the brown water, the stuff that goes into the sewers. They were te they've been testing this all over the place just to get numbers so they could say, hey, look, everybody's got it. Yeah, everybody had it. And, well, it, everybody got over it. And for the vast majority of people got over it. So here's another case why we need to be afraid, of course. And the media is throwing this at us and just seeing how it sticks. Well, we all saw how monkeypox stuck. Well, it didn't stick around because people just weren't having it. And I think that these new Omicron cases People just aren't having it. This The pandemic is over. We're at a point where this is something we just now live with. It is now a new part of the, uh, the common seasonal colds and flus that everybody gets. But here's Dr. Henry, Dr. Bonnie Henry, talking about masking and, and well, her stance on it from the beginning. I've always supported wearing masks. Oh, have you? I've never said don't wear them. I've always said wear oh. them where it's appropriate. We don't recommend that people who are well wear them because it is not an effective way of protecting yourself. And we know that it actually can be irritating and people are more likely to touch their face um, when they have a mask on. And that can be a way of inoculating yourself. If I'm not... Oh, let's just take those words for, for a second there. It's a way of inoculating yourself. You're, you're actually more likely to catch the virus, she says, <laughs> because of wearing a mask. This is an interesting concept. But inoculation, well, let's look up the, that word. The act or process of or an instance of inoculating, especially an introduction of a pathogen or antigen into a living organism to simulate the production of antibodies. So inoculation, inoculation would actually be catching the thing. So this kind of goes against what she was saying previously about, uh, well, <laughs> immu being immunized to something. Immunization, I think catching it would be probably the best form of immunization because, well, at this point, at this point, we don't even have a, uh, a, a vaccine for this new virus, the one that's already spreading through the population and is causing generally not much, not much harm at all, except a lot of inoculation and a lot of immunity. But let's, let's hear what else she had to say about masks. Not sick, it's not effective. It's not something that when I'm out in public, it's going to protect me in any way. So we don't want people wearing it all day long, for example. We cannot rely on a mask because the mask is not what keeps us safe. And masks for long periods of time are not recommended by anybody um, in any situation. We're not wearing masks now. Would we be safer right now if we had masks on? Uh, no, you see, these are the things that we have learned. I've always supported wearing masks. I've never said don't wear them. I've always said wear them where it's appropriate. Never said don't wear them. Oh, okay, never said it. Never said it. Never said it. Anyway, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think of this whole situation with the new Omicron variants. Um, let me know what you think about Pierre Polyev not even giving an opinion on where he would stand on a principled uh, position there. A lot of the people in the channel love Pierre. I like a lot of the things that he has had to say. Uh, he's been pretty quiet about all those things lately, but uh, very, uh, very in tune with the things he did say in his campaign to win. But that says a lot. Anyway, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think. <laughs> and we'll see you in tonight's live stream at 930 Eastern. Keep on trucking.